And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, I'm working on your financial freedom. It must, it must be one of those days of the week where my brain doesn't connect with my mouth, and as a result of that, I have difficulty enunciating my words. So sometimes sometimes I show up to do radio, and my, my brain is engaged, but my mouth is not in gear. Yeah, sometimes that happens to me, and it is what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, my whole head into the tune-up shop, and we're going to get this all fixed, and there, there, it's all done. That's that's the magic of radio, pretty cool stuff. So you, you didn't tune in to hear me talking about tuning up my head, my brain, my mouth, my my, my all my stuff, did you? No, you tuned in because you want to find out about real estate. You tuned in because you have discovered – that real estate may be the, the catalyst that will help you become retired. Now, here's the thing. Real estate can either help you or hurt you. And the difference between the two is knowledge. The difference between the two is having a knowledge base in your head, understanding how to do real estate the correct way. Because if you do real estate the correct way, you will get to a point of real estate retirement in the next five years. And then once you retire yourself with real estate, meaning you have enough passive income coming in that it meets or exceeds your expenses of living, that's, that's what real estate retirement looks like. Then you can start working on something called the lifestyle. Yeah, the lifestyle. That's that's what Lifestyles Unlimited members venture to do. When they become members of Lifestyles Unlimited, they get to work on getting real estate retired. Most people get it done in five years or less. I myself got it done in about two years. Now, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you that was my result. Everybody has a different result. Some people might need a little bit more than five years, and it all depends on where you're starting. It all depends on what type of resources you have available to you. It all depends on how active you are with real estate investing. What I mean by active is that some of you could be slow as slugs. Some of you could learn how to do this real estate investing game correctly, and then you take a very slow approach. In other words, you buy one asset and you hold it for three to five years, and then you sell that asset, and then you replace that asset with two assets. I will tell you, if, if you go about real estate investing that way, it is definitely the slow road. But for some of you, that's the only road that you have because you only have enough resources to get you into one single family asset. And I'll tell you this, if you only have enough resources to get into one single family asset, then you should do that. You should get into that single family asset because once you control that asset, once you have that asset in your portfolio, that asset starts paying you five different ways. You get cash flow, you get equity capture, you get natural appreciation, you get principal pay down, you get the tax advantages of being a real estate investor, which are way different than the taxation that occurs to everybody else. Believe it or not, the government has put rules and laws into place that benefit you as a real estate investor. There are a ton of laws on the books that benefit you as a real estate investor. It doesn't benefit you as a gold investor. It doesn't benefit you when you invest in anything other than real estate. The laws are written specifically to benefit the real estate investor. Now, why, why do you suppose the government has done that? Why, why do you suppose that the government wants to put laws into place in the form of tax laws that would benefit you and me as real estate investors? Here's why. The government is terrible at providing housing. You didn't know that, did you? Now, the government thinks that it needs to provide housing. There, there are all kinds of housing programs out there where the government goes and spends a ton of your money creating new construction, and then they put limits on who can live in those assets, and then they control those assets once they 
assets are built and they're put into service and they are they are type they are assets that are that are geared towards low income housing they are assets that are geared towards people that don't make a lot of money they are assets that are well to be honest with you assets that you shouldn't have in your portfolio you shouldn't have these assets in your portfolio and here's why the government is really bad at real estate investing the government doesn't know what it's doing and the government spends money willy-nilly to provide housing for people that, to be honest with you, they need the housing. But at the end of the day, when you become a real estate investor, those are not the types of people that you're going to make as part of your clientele. You didn't know that, did you? No. See, what you're looking for is you're looking for real estate that attracts a certain demographic of people. We're not we're not investing into places where we're supporting a low income lifestyle for our residents. That's not what we do. We invest in assets that attract blue collar workers. Now, what's a blue collar worker? A blue collar worker is somebody that actually has a pretty good job. They make pretty decent money. They have chosen not to buy an asset for themselves to live in. It's technically not an asset because when you, when you buy it to live in, it doesn't pay you any income. And by Lifestyles Unlimited definitions, that's really not an asset. No, that's, that's technically a liability. Yeah, when you buy an asset to live in, it's technically a liability. So we don't call it an asset, even though I keep calling it an asset on the radio show. So what am I getting at? A target market refers to a specific segment of potential buyers, renters or investors that a real estate investor aims to attract. That's that's what a target market is. That's kind of what I was getting at in the last segment. I, I realized that in the last segment I was I was kind of going on and on. I was droning on and on about probably a lot of nonsense. But what I was trying to get to was the fact that when you become a real estate investor, you have to identify who your target market will be. Your target market is very important because if you are not focused on your target market, you're going to be focused on all kinds of things that aren't going to help you when you become a real estate investor and start investing in real estate assets. Now, many of you listening to my voice, many of you have no real estate investing experience at all. Now, some of you, you have, you have experience, but your experience is one of two things. It's either good experience or it's bad experience. Now, this is what we have found out at Lifestyles Unlimited. The majority of you that have real estate investing experience, it's actually bad experience. So what do I mean by bad experience? Well, you have invested in real estate assets and you haven't taken full command and control over the different variables that real estate investing allows you to achieve as a real estate investor. Man, I just threw out a bunch of crazy words there. You know, did you like those? All right, so let me let me explain what I'm getting at. Real estate, when done correctly, is going to pay you five different ways in the single family space. In the multifamily space, it's going to pay you six different ways. In the single family space, you have something called cash flow. Cash flow is necessary because you use that cash flow to get yourself to a place of retirement. What I'm getting at is that when cash flow comes in, you use that money to replace the expenses of your life. So when you buy one particular asset and just one particular asset alone, kind of like I alluded to at the beginning of the show, that asset must pay you an income stream. Now, many of you you own real estate assets, and I'm just talking to those of you that have real estate investing experience. Many of you own assets that don't pay you cash flow. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious as a heart attack. And, and some of you are going, wow, he just called me out. He totally just called me out. And here's what I'm getting at. Back in the day, I used to invest in real estate assets that didn't pay me cash flow. Now, why, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Because I was following somebody else's roadmap. And somebody else's roadmap taught me that real estate just goes up in value. It just appreciates in value over time. And that if I were just to, to buy the asset and just to hold on to the asset and to keep feeding that asset, in other words, keep pumping money into that asset, eventually that asset would mature and I'd make money on the asset. But here's the problem. When you, when you have 
no cash flow or you have negative cash flow, you are feeding the machine. You didn't know that, did you? So you are you are taking money out of your pocket every month to keep that so-called investment going. In that case, it's not really an investment. It's not an investment if you have to keep feeding it each and every month. The only time you should have to feed that investment is when you buy that investment. That's the only time you should have to inject money into the asset. And here's the other thing that, that many of you don't understand that own real estate that are doing it incorrectly. Many of you bought the asset at full retail price. Yes, you heard me correctly. Full retail price. In other words, you did not buy that asset for pennies on the dollar. And because you didn't buy that asset for pennies on the dollar, you have lost out on something called equity capture. Now, what is equity capture? Equity capture is a functionality when you buy an asset and you put a certain amount of money into that asset, but you are buying that asset at wholesale pricing. You're buying that asset for pennies on the dollar. So you acquire that asset and then you fix that asset up. It's going to cost you money to fix that asset up. But at the end of the day, once you take into account your acquisition costs and your fix-up costs, if your total costs still are at a wholesale level, the difference between that wholesale level and the actual retail value of that asset in the marketplace, that's equity capture. And what that does for you is that puts additional equity into your pocket. So let's say, for example, let me just give you an example of equity capture. There's a there's a property out there that you can buy. This is a property the moon sent me. Uh, it's in Houston, Texas, and it has an after repair value of two hundred forty one thousand dollars. You can buy the asset for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So in other words, you're, you're going to buy the asset for sixty two cents on the dollar. Now you're going to fix this asset up. And you're going to use something called a hard money loan. We haven't even talked about that yet, but just keep that in the back of your mind that you're going to have a hard money loan in play here because it allows you to do all of these things the most effective way. And remember, many of you out there that own real estate, you did it incorrectly. You did it ineffectively. So what I'm trying to point out to you is that when you buy this asset for pennies on the dollar, you're buying it at wholesale pricing. Now, this particular asset, it's going to take about $41,000 in rehab costs, and it's also going to take about another $10,000 in closing and holding costs. So at the end of the day, you're going to, you're going to spend another $51,000 on improving this asset and holding the asset in your inventory while it's in a hard money state. But here's the thing. When you do it this way, when you do it the Lifestyles Unlimited way, you are going to capture $40,000 of equity in this asset. What I'm getting at is that when you, you spend $150,000 to acquire the asset, and then you spend another $51,000 to rehab and, and to hold it and for the associated closing costs, you're only into the asset for $201,000. Did you hear me correctly? You're only into the asset for $201,000. Now, if you remember correctly, I said the asset has a value, a retail value in the marketplace of $241,000. That's an additional $40,000 of equity that you're capturing in this asset. Now you're probably wondering, okay, well, how much money do I have to put into this deal? What does it cost me to, to buy this asset? All right, I hope you're sitting down because you're only gonna need about 11% of the value of the asset. In other words, you're going to need $27,500 to do this entire deal. That $27,500 of cash out of pocket will be added to the additional $40,000 of equity that you acquire in the asset. So your total equity in the asset is now $67,500. $67,500. So at the end of the day, this is the correct way to buy real estate. We come back from the break. I got to get back into target markets because you have to understand who your customers are. Stick around.
Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. Lifestyles Unlimited member Lisa on how our educators and mentors share their knowledge. The whole Lifestyles Unlimited team is just wonderful and all the people in it is basically copying what I do so you could be successful. Lifestyles Unlimited. Over 33 years teaching the real estate retirement roadmap. Text the word radio to 88007. That's radio to 88007. Join for just $297 and save 60%. Lifestyles Unlimited. Text radio to 88007. Creating the lifestyle you've always wanted. You're hearing Lifestyles Unlimited's Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the second half of the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, I'm working on your financial freedom. And I'll tell you what, if you're just joining me, I'm kind of all over the map because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to impart upon your mind that real estate investing when done correctly, can get you to a place of retirement in five years or less. Now, that's a pretty big, big statement. It's it's a very big statement, especially since most of you are trading time for money, putting money into a 401k or putting money into an IRA or some other government-sponsored savings account, and you're on a game plan to get retired in the next 35 to 45 years. I mean, that's that's the game plan that was laid out for me. That's the game plan that I followed. That's the game plan that most Lifestyles Unlimited members followed before becoming members of Lifestyles Unlimited. So when you become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, things change. Things change dramatically because what you start to understand is that you don't have to wait 35 to 45 years to get yourself to a place of retirement. You can get it done by investing in real estate assets. But to do it correctly, you have to be educated. I'm I'm being very clear with you, right up front with you. You have to be educated because there are those of you out there that are listening to me that are on that 35 to 45 year plan that actually have real estate in your portfolio. But that real estate's not paying you cash flow. That real estate was not purchased correctly, as I pointed out earlier in the show. That real estate is actually a drag on your portfolio. It's costing you money every month to have that asset in your portfolio. You didn't know that, did you? Yeah, the reason I can say that is because I went many, many years having real estate in my portfolio that didn't pay me anything. It didn't pay me a dime. I fed the machine every month. It cost me money every month to own my real estate because it was all based on the fact that real estate goes up in value. And as long as you feed the machine, that you will win. And that doesn't always work out because when you look at your rates of return, you have to look at all the different sources, you, especially when you're talking about single family or multifamily investments. Because when you're talking about real estate assets, you have to look at the five different ways that we make money in real estate, six different ways if we're talking multifamily. And if all five or six of those ways are not paying you every month or every quarter, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. So let me let me switch gears on you because what I want to talk about is I want to talk about your customer. I want to talk about your target market. Now, many of you think that investing in real estate is the asset itself. But it's more than that because there is somebody or a group of somebodies that will live in that asset. Now, one of the things you should get to know is you should know different cities or regions. You should get to understand the economic conditions, the job growth, the population trends in a city or region, and knowing so can influence demand for different types of properties. Now, what should you be looking for in a particular city? You should be looking for an increase in population, an increase in population, an increase in job growth, and an increase in economic conditions. The other thing you should be looking for is whether or not that municipality or that county or that state is landlord friendly. What do I mean by landlord friendly? Well, there there are many, many locations around this country that are not landlord friendly. In other words, there have been laws put on the books by local municipalities that do not benefit the landlord. They benefit 
the resident. And as a result of that, if the resident stops paying you every month, like they're supposed to pay you in accordance with the, the lease contract, they can stay in the property for a long period of time. Now, I choose to invest in geographical locations that are landlord friendly. That's one of my, my key tenants that I look for when I'm looking for areas to invest. And one of the things that I want to know is if I have to evict somebody, how fast can I get it done? Now, many parts of the country, you can evict somebody in 72 hours. You literally can get it done in 72 hours. But if you're in a place like California, you might be able to get it done in 72 months. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Now, I might be exaggerating the, the truth a little bit there, but at the end of the day, I may not be exaggerating at all because places like California are not landlord friendly. Places like Texas are very landlord friendly. And as a result of that, what I want to do is if somebody is in my property and they're not paying what they're supposed to pay, I need them to go away so that I can find somebody else in that target market that will pay me one third of their income to live in a beautiful place that I prepared for them. Does that make sense? Okay. One of the other things that we need to talk about is we need to talk about psychographics. We need to talk about lifestyle preferences and we need to talk about values and attitudes. And what I'm getting at is these are not your lifestyle preferences. These are not your values and attitudes. These are the preferences of your ultimate customer. Does that make sense? So when you, when you think about these types of people that you're looking to lease to, and if you're offering them single family housing, keep in mind that many of these people are either coming from single family housing, maybe they're getting a slightly bigger property, or they're getting a slightly smaller property, or maybe they're getting a property that's closer to where they work, or maybe they're getting a property that isn't in an apartment community. There are many different reasons why people will come to single family housing, and they will rent that single family housing. So at the end of the day, you have to understand the lifestyle preferences and the values and attitudes of your potential renters. Now, some people prefer urban living with access to nightlife and public transport, while others might prioritize suburban areas with parks, community activities, things like that. So it's up to you to understand who your customer is. And now get this, eco-friendly renters may seek properties with green features, while others might prioritize luxury or historical significance. So again, Make sure you're targeting the people that you need to target. Now, when it comes to me, I'm going to avoid any property that's in a historical neighborhood. And the reason I'm going to avoid any property that's in a historical neighborhood is because somebody else makes a decision on whether or not I can renovate the property and what I can do with the property. Yeah, so I avoid historical locations. I do. I, I, and, and here's the other thing. I avoid luxury properties. What I am looking for is I am looking for an asset that can meet the bulk of the needs of the target market that I'm looking to service, which is people that have blue collar types of lifestyles, people that are firefighters, people that are police officers, people that are nurses, people that have really good jobs, that make really good money, that want to live in a really good place. So, Let's talk a little bit about these different types of people. Let's let's talk about people who either should or should not be a part of our target market. Does that make sense? What about first-time home buyers? Should 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 we be targeting first-time home buyers? And the short answer is no. No, we should not target first-time home buyers, and here's why. We're not looking to sell the property. We're looking to rent the property. We're looking to make money from the property, but we're not looking to sell the property at this time. Now, at some time in the future, we may want to sell the property, but for now, we're going to own and operate the property. We're going to have the property providing us cash flow, and then as the property increases its equities, we may look to sell the property in the future, but we are not, at the beginning, trying to target first-time home buyers. What about what about luxury buyers? Are we Are we trying to target luxury buyers. And, and I'm just going to take you right back to the first time home buyers example. And I'm going to tell you it's the same answer. Yeah. Cause we're not looking to sell the property. This is the key thing that I need you to understand. When you become a real estate investor, real estate investing is not like flipping. You don't go out and buy the asset, fix it up and then put a for sale sign in the front yard. <laughs> 
What you do is you put a for rent sign in the front yard and you are looking to provide clean, functional workforce housing to a demographic that is looking for it, to a target market that is looking for it. So what are some other examples of target markets that may be of interest to you? Clean, functional workforce housing is designed for people in the blue collar segment, period, end of story. Where did I learn that from? I learned that from Lifestyles Unlimited. I learned that from 35 years of experience with regards to real estate investing strategy. So what I am looking for in my target market is I am looking for somebody who's wanting to rent. I am looking for somebody that has a good, stable income. I am looking for somebody that makes at least three times what I am charging for rent. I am looking for somebody who has stability in their life. I am looking for somebody that's not going to trash my property. I am looking for somebody like me. Yeah, somebody like me. There is somebody like me out there that wants to rent a beautiful property that I have prepared for them. And at the end of the day, that's what we do at Lifestyles Unlimited, is we learn how to invest correctly in real estate assets that pay us five different ways. Now, at the beginning of the show, I was talking to you about an investment asset that, that came across my desk. And here's the thing I want you to take away. You can buy this asset. It's worth $241,000. So some of you are thinking, okay, where do I get $241,000? Do I just, you know, just go dig up a jar of money in my backyard? No, that's not what you do. That's not how you buy this asset. What you're going to do is you're going to buy this property using a hard money loan. And that hard money loan is going to teach you, well, it's not going to teach you, that hard money loan is going to give you the opportunity to buy this asset for 11 cents on the dollar. You heard me correctly, 11 cents on the dollar. So in other words, you can buy this asset for $27,500. And when you know how to buy it correctly, you're going to capture $40,000 worth of equity in the asset. The asset is going to pay you cash flow of $236 per month. And when you annualize that cash flow, that's like giving yourself a raise of over $2,800 per year. So what can you do with $2,800 per year? There's a lot of things you can do with that. You can use that to make a car payment. You can use that to make an insurance payment. You can use that to make the payments on the expenses in your household. This is how we get to a place of real estate retirement. This is how we change your mindset. This is how we get inside your head and we start retooling what we're trying to teach you. Because at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make you understand that real estate is the best asset class for you to invest in. But in order to invest in real estate correctly, you need to have proper education. Where do you get proper education? Well, from Lifestyles Unlimited, we've been around for 35 years teaching people how to invest correctly in real estate assets so that they can take advantage of the five different ways we make money in real estate, six different ways if we're talking real estate. So at the end of the day, I want you to understand who your target market is. I want you to understand what type of asset that you're willing to buy. I want you to understand that maybe what you're doing right now for investing, it's either working or it's not. I want you to understand that if you own real estate in your portfolio, you're either owning it correctly or you're owning it incorrectly. And if any of these things bother you, then what you need to do is you need to get into Lifestyles Unlimited because we will teach you the correct methodology. We will teach you how to understand everything that I've talked to you about on today's show. And more importantly, if you want to do what I'm doing, you want to do what the 50,000 members of Lifestyles Unlimited are doing. What you need to do is you need to go to lifestylesunlimited.com. When you get there, what I want you to do is sign up for a free workshop because it's that free workshop that gets everything set into motion. It's exactly where you need to be. Go to lifestylesunlimited.com, sign up for that free workshop, and let's get you going. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the host, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.